What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is always, it is your boy, Jay Diesel, coming at you live with the next installment of Under the Radar. And back with me this week, after his brief hiatus, is my partner in crime. That was the last time. Last oh, time, Oh, is that folks. the last time? Yeah, because, listen, we don't have any more orientation day. So, on Mondays. So, my job won't need me. But I'm ah, back. Ah, okay. I'm back. Did y'all miss? Did you miss me? I I, I missed you, Floki. How uh, I, how could I how could I not miss my partner in crime? I, I, I missed now. you, Jay Diesel. Like honestly, we talk we talk all the time, and I'm just like, fuck, dude, I missed you so much. Oh, yo, my we heart, act, my heart. You know, actually, my heart was actually going. Um, so today's a little special for both of us. Yes. So we usually have a guest in the middle. Yes. As you guys can probably see on stream. But there's only two panels today. We haven't done this since the patch got announced. Correct. I can't remember that. Um, so today um, we want to talk about... Because we have projects outside the podcast that we work on. So I thought it was really cool since, Jay, you just announced the PRZ... Yeah, I've been working really hard on Summit Wrath of the Mix. That we come on here and kind of just like talk about like the process that we went through for all that, and like interact with you guys on that, and also go through like all the other stuff that happened throughout the weekend, yep. things like that. So this will be a kind of a fun episode because we we get the show for once. Oh man, and that I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty nice. It's it, you know honestly like we're 22 episodes in you know we need we need some time to ourselves we 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 love all our guests we we do do you, ha do you have okay not to sound not to sound oh, like no. you you're gonna put me on pick the spot. Favorite. I, I hate to make you pick between our our children but do you have a favorite episode do so I far? have a favorite episode I mean it's tough I, LK is pretty high for me. Purely because his, of his comments about not drinking your waifu's bathwater, and that still that still cracks yeah. me up to this day. Yeah. <laughs> so the LK that, water that joke one, is still the best. So LK's pretty damn good. So I I gotta I gotta put that pretty high up there. But honestly, I love all the guests that we've had on. Yeah, we've, we've had like too. a pretty incredible smattering. It's also like fantastic when I see these guests at tournaments. Yeah, I agree. You know, like I ran into Pivot Ace at CEO, right? And stuff like that is just absolutely phenomenal. That or uh, one of my friends was competing at a regional in Arizona. And they're like, hey, I'm going to be playing this guy named Wrath. They're like, you know anything about him? And I was like, oh, I know Wrath. I know who this <laughs> man is. He was, he was our first it's guest. Like we, I, have our, I have intel from like before the patch got announced. Right. Like I, I've got like <laughs> eight month old, eight month old stuff. Right, but it's really cool. You know, I agree on the um, LK uh, comment. Kim roasting my life water decisions ever <laughs> since then. Ever he, since then, he went on, he went in on you. I, I was I, I was losing it. Now I I, I, I drink filtered water. Oh my from goodness. my sink. Have you have you are you tell, is this character development? This is character. Is that development. what that's supposed to be? It's supposed to be character development. Yeah. I actually get really mad when I don't see a, like any like decent water, like like good water, or like if I have to take it from the sink, and there's no water fountain. Like if if your venue has no water fountain, I get mad. Hey, you know what? I don't care if, don't care if it's city water. That's that's growth. Right, that's what that is. That is that is personal growth. LK, if you if LK, if you if you're listening to this, know that I got you. But yeah, no, I think LK's was really good. Um, I like our predictions episodes, um, so far with uh, Charles Fujito and with Lowry. Um, we might be doing one for Evo. Actually, no, we'll we'll probably do that on the side and then talk about our picks because there's 64 pools. We're not talking about every single pool. I might highlight yeah, some no. ones I think are really interesting, but yeah, no, yeah, I think that's. I, I thought about that ever since I was like, but no, but yeah, let's start talking. So you're coming fresh off a announcement. Yes. Well, why don't you Why don't you tell the people um what you announced for those who might not know? All right, ladies and gentlemen who are joining or tuning in here, thank you, chat. You are much appreciated as always. 
uh, I unveiled the brand new PRZ. So what this is, I'm sure you all remember the PGRZ. So that was the Panda Global Power Rankings that initially had been introduced. Well, obviously, the last time we got an update was over a year ago at this point. So at this point, Panda Global has kind of established they, they dabbled in it, but they're done, right? They're, they're done. Yeah. They, they, they're like, hey, this Dragon Ball thing, kind of cool, but it's not really what we want to do, which is fine. You know, they're going to go their own direction. Mm-hmm. And now we have World Tour rankings, right? So if you have points, you're going to be ranked for the World Tour. Well, what I wanted to do was take what Panda Global did, and I actually wanted to bring it to my region. Because awesome. one of the big things for me in terms of fighting game scenes if you go to tournaments and you top eight, yeah, you'll get recognition, right? But realistically, in the vast majority of scenes, very few players in your scenes are ever going to get to that point. True. Very true. Right? I agree with that. And I think it's important, especially at here on. I mean, look at the name of this podcast, guys. Under the Radar. Right? It's about highlighting up-and-coming talent and trying to you know, kind of get those people to the forefront. So what I wanted to do with the PRZ, I wanted to create a way for there to be recognition for the players in my region. And I wanted to go ahead and reward them for grinding, for working hard and doing all this. Now I'm actually going to go ahead here and I'm going to go ahead and pull up the PRZ for you guys. I'm actually going to look, I'm going to look for it on Twitter. Um, so that way I have it right next to me. Um, just for those, um, what so did you have like a month to month that you started from yes. like, a, like a tournament so what um so what, what was that process what i'm like? currently what i what i'm doing is i i won't give away all my trade secrets obviously because uh i developed some proprietary stuff but right. what i will talk about is kind of the basic outlines for what it takes to qualify for the prz okay and what you're actually going to get Right, because obviously you put in all this effort to get on this list, you're gonna want a reward, right? It's gotta earn something, right? Like, and you know, I I think that is one hundred percent fair. So give me one second, real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and black things out for a second, so I can go ahead and move some things around. Yeah, I and I do have it up. Um, I am actually gonna link the. Um, yeah, link, link the tweet in the chat. That would be. I will link. The- also, what's going on, Johnny? Shout outs to uh, the lovely folks over at Scorpius Esports. Um, Cali Mac got top thirty-two over the weekend. At Absolutely. And he's so he's been doing some good work over there. So, yeah, looking at your list, it's actually like while you're getting stuff together, I'll go. I'll run run it through. Yep. Um. So in first, we got Big Bag Mill. Yep, you guys can currently see on screen right here. Oh, you, it's on the screen now? Nice. Yes, it's on, it's on the screen. Our beautiful faces are not, but I wanted to make Aww. sure that people could see here. Um, but as you can see, you've got Big Bag Mill. He placed first overall in our region. He was an absolute monster. Uh, he had the highest number of events competed at in our region, and he also had the highest placings. Okay. So overall, incredibly, incredibly strong. And really can't ask for much more than that in a player. Right. Um, second was Vato. Vato has had some amount of regional success. But has not had as much success out of region at bigger events. Right? Mm, that's very true. I haven't seen his name a lot. Like, comp- like compared to Big Bag Mill, um, I haven't really seen his name a lot versus everybody else. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of the thing is like this is somebody yeah. who you might not have you know heard as much of, right? Right. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this out for you guys so you get a nice clear picture right here. Yeah. Um, scrolling through the list, was there anybody that surprised you on so this list? It was at, the PRZ was actually kind of interesting. Um, right. in terms of in terms of who we had. So Big Bag Mill, no surprise there. I knew he was going to place first, basically. Um, he had the highest number of events, consistent pre-placing, all that jazz. Vato, uh, 
it was funny. Uh, some people actually were kind of confused how they made it. Uh, an example is Diagon. So Diagon actually had a top eight finish at East Coast Throwdown. But I don't think – and one of the things I had to kind of clear up is each season is three months in length except mm-hmm. for this first list. This first list accounts from January to the end of June. Okay. So this one is a little bit longer than the other seasons that I've done. But the whole purpose of it is, okay, hey, I wanted to kind of set a baseline, a comprehensive baseline for how people have done. Right. Uh, I think more surprising than of than who made the list – who didn't make the list who okay so i because i don't know many people from the dmv area besides fs link diagon big bag mill um kelso who i've all met and yourself yes um so some and the cutter i've heard names about who from that list because there's one name that i can think of yeah off the top of my brain and his name is not on here he's not and that is because he placed 11th <laughs> Jerry was 11th? Jerry was 11th because he had declined how much he was playing during this time period. However, he showed up to the first monthly for this new PRZ and won. Mm -hmm. So he's out of retirement. The most powerful man in the MDVA region. He didn't make the PRZ, but he's back. He's back with a vengeance here. That's really crazy. It, it really uh, is. And yeah, the other thing that I think is important for players, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this back now, is when one of the, one of the things that we're trying to work on, What the reason I made the PRZ, if you guys look in the chat or whatever, is when you try to talk about regional players, there's no brand power. Right. No one knows who you are, Right. Like, people at your locals might know you. People maybe at the adjacent venues, like, in your state or maybe one state over might know who you are. But no one's going to know you. And one of the things I I cared about and I think is a priority for me, I want to help the players in my region achieve brand power. So people know who they are, and it creates a way where they can go out and find sponsorships. That's really cool. Right? And that's – Go ahead. I remember when you were talking about like you were you were because we were talking about this on the low. Yes. And I and I was like, what do you play on announcing? And you broke everything down. And I saw your kind of like game plan. And I was like, this is something that that the DMV area like would thrive in. And you're doing like essentially it's like God's work because you're giving them a platform to get that brand empowerment, like you said, and like they can put this on a Twitter bio or an esports resume. And yes. Be like, hey, I made a, PR I, for my region. It's, it's like, what can you say now? You know? And it's like, then that can like elevate to like, here's all my matches from the past like six months. Correct. Kind of thing. So, so that's really cool. It's, it definitely has that aspect to it. Now, obviously, the big question if you, if you see a list get put out and you see a bunch of numbers next to them, how the hell did you get these numbers, right? Yeah, that's right. that's one question too. Right now, I'm I'm not gonna reveal exactly how all the numbers for the PRZ are calculated. Like, I'm not gonna give specifics because this is like an I developed an algorithm and whatnot to do this, but to give like a basic a baseline for how the PRZ is calculated, is it's calculated based on all of your results at the weekly, regional, major, and world tour level. Oh. And it and all of these are weighted. So winning a okay. weekly is not going to be worth the same amount towards your your final your final placement as winning a month or as winning a monthly or winning a like, you know, a regional, you know what I mean? Like right. obviously obviously not going to be the same. Right. I agree. And world tour events are going to be even more than that, right? Right. So, obvious so that's that's kind of what it's based on because you want to reward people for doing well at the local level. But you also want to make sure you're really rewarding people who are traveling outside of your region and doing well. Because that's really how you get that. Because to me, the PRZ is not just on paper. These are the 10 strongest players in the region, right? No, right. It's about who is going out and putting up results. Who's putting up results? Who is 
actively trying to represent their region or represent themselves mm-hmm. as a player of my region. That's actually awesome. Right? And that's that's why because if I was to go purely on power level, on how strong I think the players are, I'll tell you right now, Jerry would probably be number one in the region. It would be that's fair. him and Big Bag would be one and two. After that It's a crapshoot. I mean Yeah, it would it would be it would be quite a bit different. I think there are people who aren't on the list who could potentially make the list over people on it, and there's people off the list who who wouldn't make the list, right? So it's like yeah. and but you know, it's not about that. It's about who's showing up and who's making who's putting up results, right? Right. Now So one one question I have. Sorry to cut it. you. Yeah, go ahead. And now is it just you calculating or do you have a couple people working with you? No, I everything is handled everything is handled by myself in house. Whoa. Uh, yes. I know a lot of regions do that. Um, have a like a committee. Uh, because I know CT for Smash, they uh have like a committee of people. The the re I, exactly, and they do the same thing for like MDVA power rankings for for Smash as well. Right. The reason that it is one person is because I wanted it to get done. Okay, fair enough. I, I I'm gonna be completely honest, and I think as time goes on, I might make certain adjustments to that fact. I might mm. I might bring on other people and whatever. But at this point in time, it is – I care more about making sure this works. That's good. And part of that means that I'm going to step up and do it. Now, the one thing that has been brought up, which I think is an interesting point, is I made PR. That, yeah, I noticed that. Right. It's like I did. I made PR. I was number eight. Now, here's the thing. On other PR lists, because they have a council, it's not surprising that members of the council make PR. That's true. Like if you like an example, Seagull Joe is on the council for MDVA Smash, and Seagull Joe placed like six out of twenty, right or whatever. Right. So that's not uncommon, but there's obviously you know issues there because it's a one person thing. I I designed this right, and so there's a certain amount of trust that I have to have with the community, with people who know me to go. Yeah, I believe Jay Diesel when he says this is how it is, right? True. Sure. And, you know, and so the system's not perfect. I know it's not perfect. I'm going to continue to work on it and try to improve it. Now, all of that aside, so you've, you've done all this work. You want to make the PRZ. What do you get? Yeah. You, you get to tell people the prize? I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So, Ooh! so and I, and I kind of put this in the original tweet. So if you go to my Twitter, you can find the post. It is, it is currently in the chat. Part of what was done is at the end of the season, if you make top 10 PR, you Mm -hmm. receive an invite to the PRZ Invitational, Seasonal Invitational. It will only be the top 10 players, obviously, because that's what PR prizes, you know, prizes out to. If you make it to the, there is a guaranteed payout for every place. That's awesome. Now I could make it more top heavy, and this is this is obviously right. something I could do. I could say, look, I only because I, if I want to, I can only pay out first place if I really think that's. But I don't yeah. think, for me, that is not what I want to do. You know, I, I I don't think that's what I want the PRZ to be about. I don't want it to represent just the best person in my region. I want it to represent my entire region. That's awesome. So there was going to be guaranteed payout. First through tenth. So if you if you make PR, congratulations. You're you're gonna get paid out for it. Now, there might be special surprises for people who make first, right? If you win, there might be some other stuff on top of that, but I I don't want to go spoiling too much. And obviously you, you things are you things you are st- things are still in development. Things are still in development. But I really do want to reward people for working hard. Like that, that, that for me is one of the most important things. I think if you're out there, you're grinding, you're working hard, and you're really trying to represent your region, I think you deserve a reward for that. And I that's could. that's why I created this because I think it is something we need because I think the PR for Smash is genius. I think it's, I think it's absolutely genius. I know a lot of people love to bag on Smash for a multitude of reasons, some deserved, some undeserved. But the PR is brilliant because it creates personal investment. 
Mm, for players who otherwise would have none. If suddenly there's a difference between you making third or you making fifth at your local, even if you're not placing in the money for your local, let's say your local only pays out top two. Now you care more. Now every game carries more weight. Right. So now you want to show up more. You want to compete more because there's something on the line other than just winning that particular local. It's about making PR yeah. at the end of the season. And there's a yeah. lot of people who, in response to me putting this out, creating the project, really kind of showed a lot of interest in this and went, yeah, I, my goal is to make PR next season. And that, in turn, it kind of like, it kind of becomes this effect where your numbers across the board for the bread, the bread and butter, the, the, the bread and butter monthly, you know, your weeklies every Thursday, yes. those numbers will increase automatically. And then you'll have people trying to, to make those carpool efforts now to like events like Summer Jam, events like ECT, things like that. Yeah. That are happening in the next couple months. I so mean, that's, and, really, that's really good on you. Exactly. And that's the other reason that I wanted to make sure to include events outside of my region. That's smart. I, did, I didn't want to make this the, you know, you know, show up to the weeklies and monthly show, right? I wanted to make it who is actually going out there and playing the game. Who's pushing it. Right. And I, and I want, and the other thing is I do include, I will include pretty much any event that you compete in. There are certain criteria I do look for if you compete at an event with like, you know, two people, right? Like obviously that wouldn't that wouldn't count. Makes no sense. And also there are, you know, depending on the level you're competing at, because the other thing is if there's one regional where no no killers show up, and there's another regional where everyone who top eighted CEO shows up, those are obviously going to be slightly slightly different. You know what I mean? Right. Because one is obviously a more impressive feat. And also you take into account who you beat and who you lose to. That's true. This is a little bit this is a little bit trickier. Um, but now that I actually have I have every single player in the entire MDVA region who has ever played Dragon Ball Fighters is ranked. I ranked every single player. I <laughs> Oh my god. That's impressive. That's genuinely impressive. So there is a, um, there is a total of fifty five players who have points. Okay. There, there's fifty five players who have point who are ranked, and right. then there is other and then the, there's more players than that, but they do not have any qualification points. Okay. But there are fifty five people who I could pull up on my on the PRZ in the in the you know document, and I could show you. Yeah, this you are exactly this place. That's OD. That's actually OD. Is there so one of the questions that I have, yes. um, kind of going alluding back to the Jerry being a web. Was there anybody else on that was that didn't make the PRZ that surprised you? Jerry was really the one that I think I was the most surprised by, um, because he barely missed it. I'll, I'll right. I, I will I won't say exactly how close, but it was, it was close. It was really close. He, him, and Link, because Link's at ten, they were very, very close to each other. But Link edged him out, and you know, and part of that was on the back of you know making out of pools at CEO, right? Very true. Right, like that that kind of stuff obviously matters. Uh, there was also a lot of up and coming talent, and kind of it's all because the other thing that I I cared about top ten obviously. But I was really interested to see 11th through, like, 20th. Because those are the players on the come-up. Yeah. Those Who's are the... on that list? So, an example of a couple players from my region. Uh, there is Alien. Alien is an Android 21 player. Uh, relatively strong. Needs to tighten up his mental game a bit. But I think if he did that, would be a much, much stronger player. Uh, Zany is actually actually in the chat here he's also ranked around you know in that 14 to 16 range right uh my fat toy is also ranked similarly in that range uh had a bit of a lackluster ceo but had a lot of really good sets against really good people he was taking shanks down to his last character multiple games so he's like 
he's got some he's got some sauce, but you know, got to keep developing obviously. So there was a lot of players who maybe they're not top 10, but they're close. That's right? Good. And the thing is, that means if you're in top 10, if if you're not pushing yourself, they will overtake you, right? That's and that's the good thing about that kind of thing. Like it makes it makes the players that are already in top 10 wanting to um make it to that invitational at the end of the season. And then for those people that are 11 through 55 or whatever, yeah. it, it makes those players feel like, "Okay, now I have to step up." And overtake these slot and prove to my now and myself, but my region that I'm a threat. Yeah, because because that's the thing is like, so Smash publishes to twentieth place for bigger yes. regions, and I had initially considered publishing to twentieth, but I didn't want to, purely because I didn't think there was enough of a distinction. Like, I, I, like nah. looking looking at the weighting. There was clearly a difference between top twenty-five and below twenty-five. There was right. there was there was a very clear line there. Right. But I was trying to figure out how far do I publish for the first one. I went top ten because I wanted it to be the people who very. This is the face, right? This is the face of the region. Now it's possible the next one I might do top twenty. Now obviously right. top ten will be the only ones who receive invites. But I might choose to publish 11 through 20 as well. Yeah, just to give those players that have been working really hard, because from what it sounds like, this season's going to be very intense. Um, it's going through July to... July, August, September. Okay. So, so that's that hits e that hits Summer Jam. Yeah, Summer least. Jam is going to be one of the big regions. It's also going to hit Evo. Ooh. So we're going to have... Yeah. So the events, Defend the North evo summer jam there's going to be two more monthlies that are also mm. going to be in there and Plus there's going weeklies. to be another 10 weeklies interesting and the other thing is it doesn't just count my weekly it doesn't count just xanadu weeklies it counts everything it counts it counts uh there's also a local in virginia it counts them as well because that would That's be really awesome. unfair if i'm like man only my weekly counts right because then it would just be, oh, this is the Xanadu show, which is really Again, not you don't want right. That's not what I wanted to do. That's okay. it's about my region, not my venue. Because that's because that's frankly how I feel about. It. Now the one requirement I did put, I did put a residency requirement. That was the that was the one requirement I put. You have to live in Maryland or Virginia, or have very recent former residents. Okay, that's it. As it. So at the start, if you at the start of the season you live in this region, you can be placed. You also don't have to opt in. I I rank everybody whether or not you tell me to. You just do it out of the kindness of your heart and like the the, the love of the project. Yeah. Also for completeness, right? Uh, sure. Like I what's what's the I mean if I'm already here ranking you know tw thirty people what's what's another twenty five right? Granted, I do have to look at a lot of events. That is that is probably the main downside to what I do. I look at a lot of events. Biggest challenge for sure. That definitely the biggest challenge, but I think it's worth it because I want to be complete and also I want to reward people for going to compete. Like, you know the um Panda Global online tournaments, the keys to Evo? Yeah. Did you also did you count that? I did. Now, granted, how I'm gonna weight it is gonna be different. Right. Right. So on online online is also going to be weighted. But I can't ignore that's also a that was a seventy five person tournament. Right? So if you place ninth out of seventy five people, yeah. Even if it's right, even if it's online, that still matters. That's really good. I, I mean hell, Street Fighter Street Fighter has online Capcom Pro Tour events. You know, you know what I mean. Whether whether or not you you personally like online, in the if the eyes of the parent company, it counts. Right. Right. So. Now, obviously, it'll be calculated. It'll be weighted. All of that jazz. But that is something I do look at because you're competing, right? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of lot of different stuff like that. A lot of different angles kind of being taken in with this project.
I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Um, it's really good. I'm really happy for you, brother. I, like when you told me the pro, when you told me about the project, I was like, this is something that, um, because when we get into summit, um, kind of the summit talk yes. a little bit, and like when when we started under the radar, I knew somewhere down the line you were gonna do something for your region. I don't know what it was, but I knew this. I knew in the back of my mind, I was like, Jay Diesel's gonna do something. Yes. I can't put my finger on what it would be. Besides, like the coaching thing, but I know this dude's that this dude's gonna do something. You it know, might not be it might not be putting filters on the water. Oh my goodness! But it's something. It's something. But it's something. Right? It's something. And, and you know so. that's what it is. And I think what I'm most excited for is going to be the end of season tournament. Yeah. Um. Have you? Are, is that gonna be at? Um. Are you gonna like? I I, I am currently in that? talks, but it looks it looks promising. Because I, I obviously right. don't want to promise anything hard. But there will, one way or another, it will be hosted. It will be on LAN. It is going to be a LAN tournament. Nice. And it's going to be streamed. Ooh! Obviously, come on. You think I'm going to do a giant best players in my region tournament and not stream that? I don't know. Come on, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what you're about. I'm, Even though we're 22 episodes, in. yeah, come on, you're 22 episodes in. You gotta, you gotta know at this point. I, I have, I got, I texted him today. I was like, I'm very just like, so I, I was talking about something, and I was just like, I'm very this, and he was like, Oh yeah, and I was like, Yeah, but no, that's um, I'm really happy. If you guys are not following Jay Diesel in his efforts to do the PRZ, make sure you guys are following him. Um, he'll be putting out updates as time comes. Um, but yeah, make sure you're following along with him because that is an incredible journey i am so so proud of this dude uh literally went from just being a uh again you got you player to commentator to doing this and giving being becoming a pillar in the community for md uh for the dmv so yeah i mean and that's that's really what i wanted to do uh because it's like they say right be the change that you you want to see man right like like that's that is that is a big thing to me. A big thing to me is being there for my community in such a way where, yeah, you know what? I let's turn up, let's represent, let's make it, let's make it good. But now we've talked enough about me. Oh, no. Let's talk about Summit Wrath of the Mix. Talk to me, Floki. Oh God, what do you want to know? What do you, what do you want to know? You um, because we were actually so originally we we're gonna do a summit special beforehand, but yes. that's on postpone right now. Okay. Uh, I've already gotten approved by Jay Diesel for it. Uh, that's gonna happen at some point before Excellent. summit. Um, so how it came about was I ran a CT summit back in December right after nec um just for a couple pl- for a lot of us that could make it out um there, that same day was a snowstorm um so that anybody that was at that ct that first ct summit will tell you yeah uh that was a a haul so then a haul? It, it was a haul it was a haul granted that day i and so that so keep this in mind and for the story i entered that and I won. We did like a quick round robin. We had a lot of exhibitions. It was really fun. Right. Like, we did hot pepper stuff, that kind of stuff. It was fun. Uh, we'll like get together with everybody. Um, so keep in mind, I won the first one. So let's just put that out of the way. So around, I want to say, Combo Breaker. Either before or after Combo Breaker. I contact Lucky D. Yep. I'm like, hey, I want to run. I'm gonna run a summit. Do you want in with Massachusetts? Okay. Because I've been hearing Massachusetts has been on the come up. We have Hypnotic on our show. I I do remember Way back Hypnotic. In the day. Way back in the day, and I was like, you know what? I feel like New England. I don't remember the conversation exactly, but 
but it was on the lines of, I think we have something special here. Let's make this happen. So I teamed up with Traveling Controller and with Great Value Smash to and Cy Evermore to do all the artwork um, to do Summit Wrath of the Mix, which origin story on that name came from one of the... So actually, one of those nights that I couldn't be... It, it was either the day a day I couldn't be at the, at the podcast or it was one of those nights I had to work. I was talking to Cy. This is like weeks before CEO, and I was like we need a name for this thing. Yeah. And he was like, and we, and we started bouncing off of all the movie, um, all the movie names, but we wanted to make them like more like fighting game related, not just like state versus state kind of thing. I gotcha. Cause, cause that was kind of just like the most like stereotypical way of going around things. So we came, uh, it kind of came down to resurrection of the mix. Resurrection of the mix. Yes. Okay. To represent resurrection F because it would be the second one or wrath of the mix i think wrath of the mix just kind of encapsulates um how new england has grown over the year of dragon ball you're seeing a lot of players come out in a lot of different ways um and it's kind of like my love letter uh because as you know and a lot of people do know uh dragon ball has been nothing but the best to me yeah i have met so many great players through this so i wanted to get back in a way that because a lot of people when they hear summit they hear this whole tv grandiose production thing i'm like no i just want to slap buttons with another state for a weekend or at least i can respect that angle so we decided to put this uh Kind of, it's kind of weird to have a summit name next to it. Yeah. But until until Beyond the Smash says something, we're good. So let's go. We'll 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 handle it later. But um, so Summer Wrath of the Mix comes about. Um, we announce uh right uh two weeks before CEO. Okay. Um, like June fourteenth we announce. Um, so everything has been kind of a whirlwind. I invited five CT players. Okay. And then I tasked Lucky D with inviting seven mass players because how he set it up, where it's going to be one mass mass qualifier and then three CT qualifier. So then it turned into, there was a lot, I mean, we had hiccups, like figuring out who's coming. Right. Um, like, you know, that like how players are going to get here, what kind of, that kind of thing. But for the most part, everybody's cool with committed, that committed to the original date, yep. um, which I can get into later um and then everyone was really excited about it so i was like okay so first qualifier happens taz the tyrant blows everybody up taz the tyrant he is from ct okay um he comes back out of like because we haven't heard of him yeah since like ct gamer con and like before that nothing so he just like, comes he, out of nowhere well not nowhere he's he was he's been around the scene yeah like this dude it's almost like a jerry effect right oh he kind of drops in drops out pretty much gotcha this dude comes back in beats kite who got the first invite from me i very first one i do i do remember kite yep kite got um so for those who don't know i originally invited kite jaundice um carmine ice and dayman dayman put up his spot actually against hobby g who just competed over the weekend at defend the north and a first of seven that happened during my grad party. So technically, you had two qualifiers in like two days, but story for another day. Um, so that all happens. So, first qualifier happens, second qualifier in mass. Now, this is where a lot of things for mass got solidified. So, you, then you saw a lot of the mass boys because mass has been hype about this since I've made mention. Like, I was like, should I run a summit? And they were like, mass, yo, what's up? And I was like, oh, shit, we should do something with Matt. Okay. Because like, cause I originally was going to do another CT. It's called a day. But then I was like, wait, I can just make this bigger. Because my space can can handle it. All right. Uh, that I'm allowed it to. Which, again, that is the disqualification. Uh, you get more information if you qualify. Um, I like it. Thing, I like it. Yeah, it's okay. just like, hey. So, and then Matt has been really supportive um, about a lot of it. And Lucky D, and, I, and even CT too. Like, what's really cool about this event is that it kind of like same thing with the PRZ. It kind of gives a little snapshot, yeah, of what New England's doing. 
in terms of Dragon Ball. Because no... And the one thing, and Hypnotic has a really good point about this, and this kind of like could relay into P in the PRZ. And I don't want to sound rude. Yeah. But like half... When you hear about American Dragon Ball, you hear about two locations. Cali and New York. I mean, yeah. Maybe sometimes Jersey. No, I mean, that's that's really how it works. I mean, if I were to rank regions right now off the cuff, it it's would New be Cali. It'd be New York, it would be Cali, and then it'd probably be Jersey. It's so what I wanted to do, and it kind of turned out, is like not only want to slap buttons, but we want to add an invitational to it. So we have a couple exhibitions already lined up. Um, we are doing a – oh, what's up, Byron? So we are doing an 8v8 currently, um, 1v1, no sparking. If you spark, you're DQ'd from your team. So it's like Pokemon style. <laughs> so I'm expecting a lot of Trunks versus Vegeta on God. Um, so we're doing that. And then we're doing invi- – um, we actually – I actually teamed up with my lovely co-host because your boy wanted to get him involved even though this dude's doing some crazy stuff. Yes. He's he's breaking down two matches and then I have Brad Muse from Mass breaking down two yes. matches. Yes, and actually I will very likely be doing those tomorrow. Have you picked your matches? I picked Would you- one. Would you would you like to give your hints? Because you haven't the, even told me. The one that I I definitely want to do is Young Fish. Young versus Young Fish versus Kite. Yes, that one. Okay. I I know both of them, and so personally, I kind of I kind of I have an affinity for that one. I want to do that one. Okay. Yeah. So I kind of I what, what's cool about this event is like I kind of like gave it all to the players, yeah. like the commentators. So I was like, hey, here's here's everything yep. let's see what we can do with the canvas we have right here's a, here's a date here's a time let's put something together so when i teamed up with you and brad it was a move that i knew i had to make Makes in sense. terms of like it gives you guys more brand exposure and like you can put this on a reel if you want and that's like my main goal and like we have commentary um for the cutoff for the qualifiers a lot so I want to give people like Cravat, who's also in the, the freaking Summit. He has a commentary reel because he's going to have stuff from Summit. Yeah. I'm going to have stuff from Summit. It's just like a big thing for all in brand development. No, I um, mean, and that's, and that's I think we both, kind of in different ways, have a right. similar idea for what we want to see for our regions. Definitely. Which is the idea of developing players so mm-hmm. that they can succeed. I agree with that. So now it kind of came. So we were actually tomorrow is actually our next qualifier. Yeah. And then two weeks from now is our last chance. So originally the date was August 10th. Um, I'm not going to go into full details. Um, you guys saw my Twitter happened entirely uh, has switched the date. Um, there was a little bit of complications, but we are fig- figuring everything out. Okay. Um, the thing is with that is that a lot of people were very like, Instead of just bashing me for it, they were like, dude, it's okay. Like, right. I, I remember calling Dan Lucky D and I was like, what do I do? Because this is like actually my first event de- on this kind of scale. Because like CT yeah. summits are like slight work. I can just reschedule those, whatever. But the fact that I'm working with an entirely different state now, it means it a lot more a- coordination. Exactly. So it was like, it was a little, like, a little bit on edge. But I think it tur- it's turning out to doing something special. One thing I'm also doing that you guys are going to see more of, and I didn't make mention of this, I'm actually in, I'm actually doing player profiles Ooh, for nice. every single player in Summit. Very cool. And for the commentary. So what is this going to consist of? I have asked every single player five questions, um, like a basic, like a basic Q and A. Right. Um, just something, something super easy. This way, they're not like all over the top actually i could pull them up on my screen yeah go um, go so, ahead i mean i would love to so, hear some of this player the player stuff so question one was name and gamer tag where are you from right. any significance question two is the team you currently play any particular reason so like kind of like getting the lore on them 
third one's interesting. One buff and one nerf you'd like to see to the game or to your character. Oh, man. Asking players about game balance? Bold move. Question four, dream character you'd love to see added, and then the obvious one, what does Summit, being in Summit mean to you and why? Um, commentary, I did I like switch it. up a few things. A commentary for the, I, I changed a few things um, about it. Um, I don't remember what I texted them. Um, and then that team is Brad Muse. I actually can fully announce this now. Um, and I'm actually, this is an under the radar exclusive. Uh, Brad Muse and Bean from Great Value Smash will be a part of the commentary team for Summit Wrath of the Mix. Very so cool. So that is, that is official. Um, both are can make that date, and both are okay with doing commentary. So I am, like, giving them the reins. I'm like, here so, you go. So when's, when is the uh, Under the Radar Summit? Dude. When, when does this happen? That, yo... That would be wild. We would have to do it at an event, though. I mean, we'd literally be inviting players from across the country. That would be yo. Can we have all like an all like all of our guests in the summit? If we had every guest we've ever had on one tournament, that would be wild. I wouldn't know who would win that. Yeah, actually, I don't. I wouldn't feel super comfortable picking one person to win that. Um, I mean. (laughs) There is obvious, like, guesses. On paper, LK would be the favorite, but he would also be up against a lot of character specialists because that's a lot of what we've had. So it would be a really, really interesting event. But That's a really really cool thing. But, yeah, going back to that a bit. um, But, yeah, no. So I want to give everybody a player profile, so I'm I'm finalizing that. Um, And using this extra time to, like, figure out um what we can do with the time we have so like doing the player profiles right. hyping up the event uh making sure like maybe you have an extra event in between where mass shows up and then like yeah. have the official event you know just things of that nature no and then i'm actually teaming up with a so i just graduated from central connecticut state university okay. over here right where Congrats. i was Thank you. Um, I actually team I am I'm teaming up with a clothing brand from a student. And one thing I wanted to do for this event in particular is give back to not only um, some of the community members from Dragon Ball Fight, the Dragon Ball Fighters community. So like under the radar yeah. um, is, a, is an official part of the summit. Um, Sai Evermore is official part. Um, things like that yeah um but it's just like i want to like i want to give everybody like they can you like every not even myself too right like i want to give everybody involved something that they can put on a resume like for esports and like or even just life and be like i was a part of summit wrath mix and it's like what is that and then it was like there's a big whole event that yeah. was created um but yeah, no, it's gonna be a wild event. We have a lot of character specialists um, that are gonna be there. Now, uh, I I gotta ask. Oh God, who you got your money on? <sighs> if you had to pick, what who's gonna take it all? In the Invitational? Yeah, not not the team part, because you obviously got to stay on your boys. Yeah. But who do you got for the free format Invitational? Free format Invitational. So. We do have Hypnotic in the bracket. Yes. Um, that's one of the favorites um, from Mass. There is two more qualifiers. So that's one thing that I am taking into account um, before I make definite picks. But if I have money on people, it is my boy Dayman from CT. He's number two behind okay. me. He's right behind, he's right behind me. Uh, I have him doing really well. Um, I hope Javi G qualifies. Because that dude has been on his ground. What's if his team? Any, uh, he actually um, picked up Piccolo uh, and has been on my... Uh, so he's been, been playing Piccolo Bardock Goku. Right. I don't know if he's switched teams yet. Yeah. I don't know if he's planning on it, but he's one person. And a lot of people have already stated um, a lot of other stuff. But yeah, we have a, like a Vegeta specialist. Uh, oh, like yeah. You've Super got... Vegeta, um, Carmine. Yep. And then we have Asian Tom representing the Ginyu Force from Mass. Does he have match footage that I can... Wait, wait. Is he one of the four matches I can choose to, to review? 
I think he has match footage. I'm going to find, I'll ask him. Yeah, because if I could pick him, his, one of his matches and Youngfish, I would totally take that. That was his fight too. Yeah. And plus, Dayman's really interesting too, because that's the actually the person that he's playing. So I'll go through the matches that are like announced. Yeah. So we have Dayman versus Asian Tom. Okay. We have, which is like a, like a, Gin, so it's the Goku Rangers versus the Frieza Force. Um, he doesn't, Asian Tom does not play Frieza. Just yeah. put that, put that in your mind. Um, Ice versus Pete the Monster. Pete the Monster could play Frieza. We don't know if he's going to play Frieza. And then Ice is just a degenerate. We have That's Carmine how you know they're versus, a good player. We, we have Carmine versus Cravat. I feel like more entertaining of the two. Uh, of the four matches um carmine's more of like uh but he's a super saiyan vegeta specialist he takes really a big pride in the prince of all saiyans yeah going up against the booler gang if can i get a booler in chat y'all know what that means shout out to the booler uh cravat's doing a lot of work he actually didn't think he was gonna qualify and then he won a round robin to get in uh they um, gotta make it happen and then the last match is young fish versus kite Okay. Uh, that that one has a little bit of history, um, and a lot of variety. You're gonna see Piccolo versus Twenty One. Um, that's kind see... of that's kind of an interesting match. And actually, one thing, one of the things I think has been kind of interesting. And this is off of Summit for just a brief second. Yeah. How Piccolo has kind of been bullied out of the meta by GT Goku. I love it. <laughs> I actually love it. You love it because. I love it because no one, no one's playing the Namekian. Yet, no, one. no, it's really funny. I've, I have not seen a Piccolo in a minute. It's just like it's weird. It's just nice. He's gone. It's nice, it's nice to know that no one's playing the Namekian no more. So, because I remember at the beginning of the season, like, oh my god, Piccolo is so good. Like he can solo snap and universal fuzzy. This dude literally became irrelevant once GT. So, like Hook. Beneath, Golbo, Youngfish, Hypnotic, myself, Paka. No order to. There's probably a bunch of other Piccolo players missing. But, like, there's only a handful now. Versus before, everybody in their There was a lot of people Piccolo. picking up Piccolo and a lot of people who dropped Piccolo. After... That, char- that character has the most pickups and drops. In one season. Yeah, it was kind of wild. I think his meta share was actually kind of decent. Now it's gone. Yeah. And it's going to be kind of interesting, too, to kind of see, like, how the meta is going to shift after, like, things are the PRZ Invitational and Wrath of the Mix. Because those are... those Both those Invitationals are after each. Yo, I want to see an exhibition between the winner of the PRZ for this season and the winner of Summit. <laughs> That would be okay. Yo, region be region. <laughs> yo, doubt. Yo, yo, we can set that up. We can actually set that up. I mean, I could, I could, I could see that under the ra- under the radar exclusive. Do we, do we, do, do we just put our whole brand on top May- of that? I mean, maybe. Also, at some point, I would love to see uh, MDVA versus CT. I think a lot of people want to see him. I, I think a lot of. I think the thing is too. It kind of goes back to what I mentioned before. Mass and CT, like, both as regions, yeah. they don't get, like, at, kind of similar to MDVA, right? They don't get a lot of love. Yep. So, if you literally put MDVA versus New Link, something's got to give. Something, something's got to, look, it's got to be good. There's a and lot of. And then me and you will be, so be sitting in the back eating popcorn watching blood on the screen. And Yo, we'll you, and, like... you and me on the commentary <laughs> desk as we watch the bloodbath on Furl, CT, MDVA, come on. Or uh, Matt, oh my god, and Mass involved? Yo, Mass would just Yo, go... Mass plus CT versus CT. Maryland plus Virginia. You want to make that happen? Yo, four, so... four state mix. I'm so down. I'm so down. Or did we just make and, and don't worry, and the logo will literally be a picture of the East Coast, except New York is just grayed out. And it just and highlights York, Jersey, the other New York, Jersey, and Pennsylvania are just like, bye. <laughs> Yo, it's like Thanos just snapped. And like that that whole like, mid-Atlantic just erased. We, we just contact Cy Evermore. I'm like, hey, man. We need, we need you to take out New York, Pennsylvania. 
<laughs> New Jersey real quick. Oh, my and then, God. No, but yeah, um, Summit Wrath of the Mix comes to you guys September 7th um, over from me. Yep. Um, that event, again, all my stuff is on Twitter, Twitch. Yeah, be sure um, be sure it, to check all his stuff out. Like, a lot of really, really good things. Now, we've talked PRZ. We've talked Summit. There's only one item left on the menu here that it would just wouldn't be right if we didn't mention. Let's talk briefly about Defend the North. Oh, God. So, okay. I, first, first like, question. First question. How much did you get to watch? I got to watch a lot of it. Okay. Um, My boy Sage made top you. eight. Which I, I was, I was, th- go ahead. How many people from your region showed up? Two. Two? We, Two. Had... we were supposed to have, we were supposed to have more, uh, right. but unfortunately there was some, some issues at the last minute, which prevented big bag mill from making it out, which right. hurt me because I think he would have really performed. So, but, and also, cause there's, there's levels to defend the North here. Yeah. Let's talk about seeding. It is 2019, and the seeding it should be better by now. I'm, I I'm, think I'm sorry. I gotta call. I gotta yeah. call out DTN for that seeding. I looked at every bracket, and I could not believe how there was like when I there is six to seven sevens and above in one pool. We have a problem. I think too, and I'm not racking on LK. LK should have been first seed. Actually, I mean, I literally went to LK stream, and I and I talked to him about it, and I was like, "Hey, Please. LK, your first seed," and he's like, "Oh, that just must mean they're doing tier seeding." So tier seeding, what it means is like the difference between first and second sort of doesn't matter. They essentially group X number of players as. These are the first seeds. Oh, uh, okay. That makes because I'm sitting here. I'm like, you really seeded LK, and I'm not bragging on LK. I think LK is a great player, but there's LK over to Kelsey. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, that's just an example of that. But. Yeah, no, but he was mentioning LK was mentioning that it was likely tier seeding, as opposed to hard seeding. Okay. Because I feel like if they hard seeded this properly, I think it would have been way better. Well, also, the other thing that's apparently kind of wild is Defend the North results are going to affect Evo seeding. Yup. This late? This late in the game, we're still having events affect seeding for Evo? Yeah, man. It, it. But, like, the thing is, though, that top eight, like, other than, like, New Anova. And like Sage, for example, and they're both two really Yo, good players. From my Jersey. boy Sage from Jersey, I love. No, I, no, Jersey. If, you, if you see this, Yo, I just want to say I was me and me and my brother. You know, toy. We were literally sitting there. We were at we were at a family function. We're both sitting there over top of his phone watching on Twitch, and That's we're like, crazy. we're like, come on! And we popped off so damn during hard a fa- during a family when you outing. made top That's eight. When you- I, yo, we have to rep. So Sage, incredibly proud oh, of you, yeah. man. I know you've been, yo, from from the IHOP at CEO. I know you've been on your grind, man. You've been doing an excellent yeah. job, and I was happy to see you get some payoff for that. I think too. I think like that tournament was very like you couldn't um you couldn't um guess that top eight. No, because the thing was that top eight could have went. So many different directions. I think one player that surprised every, not surprised everybody, but did way two players in particular that did way too well that shocked kind of everybody was Axis and Ajax Fidelity. Ajax didn't shock me. I think Ajax. Oh, see the thing. What I think Ajax in the sense that he kind of almost cruised through a lot of players. And the fact that they didn't even notice this dude. Well, one thing this that, dude was under the radar. One thing that kind of upset me, and this is about well, not upset me, but I guess frustrated me. Ajax was not seated. Yeah, he wasn't seated at all. 
how I want you to I want you to legitimately answer me. How can somebody get ninth at CEO and you don't seed him? And you seed someone like Timo over him. And that's not like knocking Timo. He can like but like I'm gonna be real for a second. And and you can clip this. If you're saying that Toriukin means more than CEO, you need to get the what? hell out of my FGs. We had a ten. It was literally a Tenkaichi event. Like, let me put it this way: if Defend the North is affecting Evo seating, there's no way in hell that CEO should not have affected DTN seating. I'm I'm nice. I'm just I'm gonna be real. D it, like. Obviously, there was a wide swath of things that potentially went wrong at DTN. I agree. Now, some Iran was kind of in the chat saying there was water and stuff like that. The reports have kind of been all over the place. One thing I do know, there was not enough setups. This one has yeah, been, you know, for Blaze Blue, they had one setup. I'm, I remember three players team. brought setups. That's bad. That's really bad. Your tournament should uh, not be relying on players bringing their own PS4 so you can run. Yeah, I think the thing is, and there's a lot of um, Bum had a 2 a.m. Uh, stream last night. Um, yeah. Talking about his time. I have something um, a lot to... There's a lot of stuff that happened with DTN. Not with me personally, uh, yeah. but I got asked to do a lot. And I, one, I wasn't planning on going away. So it kind of was like, um, and I don't have the capabilities to do certain things. Yeah. Um, but luckily, CT did do really well. Uh, shout out to Mozo and Javi G. Uh, Kite all did not too bad. Yeah. Um, but like the thing was is that this is a really bad example of a bad PR move and a bad marketing team, like trying to market their event two people like in the future too like um we do we here under the radar um do pay the, our respects to crucial b and his family Abs and louisiana FGC. louisiana fgc um our, our hearts go out there um those is one of our yeah, i was gonna friends. say those and the boys down there like yeah yeah i mean our hearts and, go out to y'all and like it, i think defend the north was so frustrating it was and here's the thing. Originally, I was really upset I was going to miss Defend the North because Same. I could I couldn't get out of work. Like, because I, like, I had taken off for CEO and it was just it was too much back to back. And, but for this tournament to be this poorly run all the way through, I heard that the yep. number of DQs for this tournament was insane. Ray Ray DQ'd himself out of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Top Thirty Two. Yeah, a lot of people had to DQ themselves out of games because pools, because brackets, pools were starting an hour and a half late. That and the fact that they were put in a hot room. Um, but I think like here's the thing too, and I see like I, I see a lot of things both sides, right? Where like I don't think I think Andy's into the brass, you know, like he had good intentions for everything, but like the dude put everybody in a hot room. It, it, it was like everything went wrong with that event and i'm very optimistic right i very, i the, i definitely agree i think there's no i'm not claiming there's malice on the part no. of dtn organizers that's not what i'm no, saying right i think right now i think dtn needs to like and i stated this a couple times on twitter just put out a statement from your pr team explain what happened over the weekend and then maybe you do take a year off. You know, some events do better when they take some time off and regroup. Yeah, especially because part of the problem is the branding for DTN was this was supposed to be a premier event, right? That's how this was branded. This was branded as like, this is the New York tournament, right? This is the heart of New York. That's what's going to be put on display at this event. And this is what you showed people was the heart of New York. It's it's and bad. that's and and that's just and, and the problem is when you make a mistake, if you make a mistake at work, 
are you supposed to just bury your head and hope it goes away? Or do you have to tell your boss and be like, hey, I know I messed up. You might not, you might be angry at me. You might not want to talk right now, but what you do, we're going to take care of this, right? Right. There's, there's a certain level of culpability you have when you are a TO, when you are an organizer to make sure that things run. I've had plenty of times where I have either run like a small event, whatever, there's been issues to be like, hey, we're going to have to redistribute what's going on. I know I've said we wanted to do this, but it's not working. We, we got to change yeah. things. We got to do things differently. Like, they didn't do really it. Good. That, and like, the thing is that happened with me, right? With Summit. Like, the thing is, is like certain people address the problem. Like, like, you see the problem and then you try to mitigate and there's like, you try to like do damage control. Yeah. But like, it, co- it only goes to a point. I think one other thing too is that also how hot it was from what i was from what i was told it was like so it was it was an actual sauna like 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 it was and plus it was on a hundred degree day it was just for that yeah i wasn't me and jay weren't there but we were just getting told by things by our colleagues i had peers. a lot of people talking about this and the and the other thing on top of this right it's like, so you have this going, what are the reasons this became so bad? They didn't allocate, from what I understand, they did not allocate games based on attendance when they split up for rooms. Yeah, Dragon Ball apparently got a lot more people than they thought it was going to. They thought Dragon Ball was going to be like 120. Dragon Ball was 176. No, I think it was like 186. 186, right? If you're if a game is fifty percent bigger than you and banked you on, you probably need to make some adjustments. But they stuck by their original plan, and it was what it was. Now, yeah. As as to the water thing, it's back and forth. I well, mean, obviously that you know at every event we should have water. I guess here's the thing for me. A lot of people in the FGC love to complain about Big E tournaments, right? It, it is very, it is, I, I want to say somewhat fashionable to talk about, oh man, it's a, it's a big E tournament, it's terrible. But I will say every big E tournament I have ever been to, are there times there's not been enough setups? Yeah. Are there times where commentary wasn't handled properly? And there's giant gaps? Yeah. Is there water? Yeah. yeah. Is there enough space for people to not be packed on top of each other? Yeah. And I think as players and, you know, as TOs, we have to figure out what we value more. True. Right? I, like, I think, there's got to be a yeah, hierarchy. I think, yeah. I think one thing, too, and I may mention this on to, uh, to a lot of people. Um, one thing is kind of like what you said. And one thing I have told people, there is no perfect tournament. No. There is, in like, you can hope for that. Even things like Evo will have its problem. Yes. Play I wasn't at CEO, but I know CEO, like, could have or probably had problems, but they were maybe small. Like, you know, like there was, there's, there's events every. Daytona event was a, the problem. See right. what I mean here? That like, right, like that was. It like was every yeah. every event has some type of problem, some type of way, and I've told this to people, and like I want to tell you guys, pick and choose what events you go to. Like, if there's an event. You're just like, man, like I've had, if you, if you had a good experience with it, yes, I would say go back. If you had a bad experience with it, why go back? It's like a fool me once, shame on, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's like the thing, right? Because a lot of people, like a lot of people that went to DTN this year, went to DTN last year. And when I was told DTN had problems last year and people still went back and people have been going back for the last five years like what does that show you yeah there there does come a certain point where we have to if an event is not delivering for us as players that you have to kind of go i might not go back this year and but kind of stick with it i think the problem is it's, it's hard when you see an event that is branded as a premier event and it is close by. It is so hard to not go. 
right you know right like you hear hey this major it's going to be pretty relatively close to me it's not going to cost me much i want to go and i think if i was on the dtn team one i would have issued a statement this weekend you know yeah i i, I, think... I would not have it, we still have dtn is closed lip retro station actually came out i don't know if anyone followed him on twitter um, god but god love his soul dude like he was he, talking about it yeah yeah like he is doing something that not a lot of people will do and like he's only doing his job and i've i've all i've talked to him personally about it um i won't get into it but i've I, i've he's just doing his job as like part of like detail, like as like a, a volunteer and like he was there as, as an ex-person yeah um but like the thing is too is that it goes back to that point of like you need to pick and choose and like this is the thing is now is like it shouldn't affect it shouldn't affect but it's going to affect not only new york events but east coast as a whole because now you're gonna look at events like summer jam and like ect and people are gonna think well dtn happened why is it going to be different? Yeah, because I think one thing that does kind of get missed by people is if you've been to the FGC for a while, you've been to a lot of events. True. You can you can go, I know most events are not like this, right? True. And so you kind of have that knowledge. You go, this is just a particularly bad event. For, mm -hmm. every, for every game, at every major, there is somebody who this is their first major. And there are, there is lot. probably a not significant number of people or like in, who went and DTN was their first major. There's a lot of people from HOC that that was their first major. And my heart goes out to all of those guys. You know, but a lot of them are thinking about it in the positive. Like I know I know granted like you're hearing this out of my mouth like oh like they because like a lot of them have said their peace on defend the north and like how it's yeah i mean if you want to if you want to list the problems i mean go like go to fine, twitter but, it's not but, hard. like but the thing is too i think it's really important is that a lot of them used it as experience in a way that they'll know now to like one pick and choose their event yeah two they'll know what it could be Things like that can be in an atmosphere. You know, it was it really unfortunate everything happened? Yeah, but it's important that you have that major experience because there's not there there isn't gonna be a time where someone from New York gets to play someone from Cal. Like you're not gonna see Super Noon come over here every so often. No, you're not gonna I see mean, players like no Kami. And the thing was most people said they loved the fact they love the people. They love getting the to play all of these all these people, but it's just, it's kind of hard when everyone talks about how they loved the bracket. They love the competition. They just absolutely hate the event, you know? And, and I, I hate that every single person I've either talked to or who has posted on Twitter has said DTN. I enjoyed seeing people, but I hated the tournament. I think that's the most important part. Like Charles for you hit me up. He was like, dude, like I, I was, I was really sad. I couldn't see you. I'm kind of happy you weren't here. And I was like, you know what? It's one of those things too. Like, you know, right. a part of me was going to go with just to support CT. Like I wasn't even planning on competing. Yeah. Um, one question that we did get, do you think majors should allow outside water and use that as use uh crucial B's death as a lesson learned? Now um, we, that I have. Is... All right. Well, here I'm Floki. Do you want me to take this? Here, I'm going to just say this real quick. I'm just going to put it out there. The cause of death still isn't out. That, that is, I, I was going to lead with that as well. Because it is it has not been confirmed. I, if and when we get a definitive statement. And should that, you know, should that be what it, he, is. What it heat stroke or whatever. Then I do think at that point, yeah, we would need to refer. But I ram you know, in the chat has been talking about how there was plenty of water. So it's like, I, I, it's one of the, I think the issue wasn't just water. I think the issue was space. I think, I think, I think that's, that's I think that's the issue that I think might is be a grand, more a problematic. 
Yeah, I think right now, I think what's most important is that I think, um, and I think part of the Space reason why and I AC. feel like hundred yeah. percent agree to that i think the thing is dtn and as a pr person i think they want to let this weekend like finish up like unless like they were i mean i feel like if they were smart they should have said something like the day they like, missed they, their what, window what, at this point they missed their window like honestly if they didn't say anything today then they kind of messed up i feel like if they were smart they they had from when it when like, all the news broke to yeah. today no i i entirely agree i mean like monday is like a good day like monday is good for a lot of things and then, it, it sucks I, for a lot but there's a lot of things that suck about it but the one thing that's important is that a lot of people recap their weekends on weekends. yeah and then i think the other thing that really bothered me is when somebody makes an honest effort to do a great job right even right. if they didn't actually do a great job I think as people, we tend to be more accepting of that, right? If it feels like you tried your hardest and it just didn't work out, we'll be like, man, you kind of suck, but I know you meant well, right? And yeah, I, I, like, think, well, I think the people at the things. top of DTN might have meant well, but from everything that I've heard, the intermediate staff was horrendous. Yeah. The combination think... of being rude, unhelpful, also just – not caring like and i i understand your your staff right and like you're probably not getting paid for this you got a t-shirt you may get some pizza or whatever i i don't know exactly what that's compensation I don't know, was i don't know how volunteering works i think honestly next event you and me are at we should talk about our experience that'd yeah, be sick. that might be good but let me find i i think part of the issue is there was there's just no goodwill. DTN at no point this weekend bought themselves any goodwill doing anything. So you know, and then they took shots at Bum. Yeah, and and that know, was honest, really not yeah. what to do here. Yeah, I think Bum. So prior to, I have my own opinions about what happened. Yeah. Um, because obviously you know what happened with me. Yes. Um. So initially, I was like, oh, like, once I hear an explanation, then it'll make sense. Yeah. Because right now, professionally, like, unless it's, I think the thing is, is like, and for me, unless I see a statement from a side of a party, um, whether it happened with the family or bum or whatever. Yeah. Bum, the fact that, and just the bum, if bum, bum saying something, solidified my opinion about him one of the best people in the fgc i because, i think i think because, it was i agree i think i actually sat down and listened to what I he had to, to say too. and the whole time i think it's it's what kind of needed to be said because the other no, thing is commute because obviously you and me can talk about these things and say hey you know there needs to be systematic changes that are made to the way these events are run but at the end of the day, what really matters is the people who are orchestrating this, who are funding, who are footing the bill. Right. Right. And, it like, kinda, and, and it's important for like people that are up, up coming with us with the invitations that we're doing. You know, it, it really like it puts like a mental note in our heads to one, try to like see these examples. It's right. like getting examples in like a, in a textbook, right? You're seeing a bunch of examples of like, this is a bad way to do a, um, an equation. And yeah. this is the right way of doing the equation. You know what I'm saying? Like, or yeah. there's different ways of doing an equation. I think it's important for upcoming TOs and TOs that are doing majors to look at events like the fundamental and try to learn from them. If you are planning to run something of that caliber. Now, if you are already established or, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, are doing monthlies, things like that. Like, yeah. I think everybody can learn from DTN one way or another. You know? I, I, I definitely think, agree on that. And then, and then too, like kind of going back on the PR standpoint, you know, because that's my field, like, and it took, and like, and I was talking about this off air, Bandai, I roasted Bandai on Twitter. Yeah, I do. Because, I do remember this. Because Bandai, a week before Versus Fighting, Announced his Atenka Eiji event. 
Yeah. And I explained how bad of a PR move that was. Because it gives no people no time. It wasn't until Dragon Ball Mom herself said something, put out an official statement, and yep. explained what happened, put my mind back at ease. When Bum stated everything that happened in an official statement through his stream, my mind goes, okay, he's being professional about it. Yeah. Like, we can, everybody can talk their shit about what happened. At, but until I see an official statement from people that are actually affected, it's just shit talk. You know, everybody and their mom could shit talk something, right? But like, if it I, until like an event says something, like we could talk shit about Bandai all we want. But they they reacted. They yeah. actually until took, until D, until took DTN criticism. reacts until DTN reacts. This is not gonna end. And that's kind of how I feel about it. Is just react. I I think DTN at some point needed to acknowledge they made a mistake. I think right. at this point DTN's plan is we're just going to ignore. And that's honestly that's how you have your event go out the door. And it's unfortunate. You know, I, I think it's and... it's weird because like I think the the especially in 2019 as the FGC is evolving Right. You need to have a social media coordinator. Truth. I, I, I think it's really something. You, you need somebody to be your liaison between mm -hmm. the TOs and between the players. Yeah. Because a lot, of, a yeah. lot of teams are doing it too. Like this, you know how many people have asked for a social media manager on their e, for an esports team? A lot. Recently? A lot. Because they realize how important – it is, and a lot of teams did have to have closed their doors, like unbroken, uh, officially yeah. closed their doors today. Um, but yeah, no, like honestly, I think at the end of the day, Jay, I think DTN is if they don't react at this point, kind of done. But there is a couple events still in the year that we can look forward to. I um, I two, completely two, agree, yeah. and I think now looking towards the rest of the tour um coming up yeah we do have two new events um thank god um, um one in ireland and one in puerto rico i am excited for the one in puerto rico i think first, first attack, attack is gonna be old really red nose actually talk about the commentary now i didn't get to top, see wait 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 top eight or top 16 he said top eight you, top eight was Chris Matrix and Liston. Listed. Chris Matrix and Liston were on the mic for top eight. I, I'll admit, I did not see as much of top eight as I did of the main bracket. I mean, yeah. I, I watched my boy Sage, and that was like really what I was into. Because I also was watching Ajax Fidelity. And it's funny because Ajax actually knocked out Sage at CEO, and Sage got the run back at DTN. Wait, to kill Sage or no, Sage? No, no, like, Sage I thought, from I Jersey. Eight, oh, 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 yeah, didn't Sage from Jersey get fifth? Seventh. Oh, seventh? Wait, Ajax Fidelity was in winners. Ajax Fidelity finished at ninth. What? Sage beat him. Wait. Yeah. Did I, did I read this wrong? What, yeah. Am I on crime? Oh, my goodness, Floki. Is that how? Hold on. Oh, my. I thought Ajax made top eight. Ajax got ninth. My boy Sage got eighth. Oh, I, no, I, I mean, I, uh, I, my, I was really kind of annoyed those two had to play. To be perfectly honest, because I wanted mm -hmm. both of them to make top eight, but right. unfortunately, it was a bit of a team kill. I'm pulling up DTN right now. Like, no, oh, Ajax I'm is like... insane. I think Ajax is a very, oh, yeah. very strong player. We had him on the he... podcast last week. I got a chance to yeah. talk to him, kind of pick his brain. I, after watching him this weekend, I I think he is going to do a bit more soul searching based on his team. He's really hoping Janimba or Broly can kind of serve as substitutes for two of his characters. But I think, it's kind of up in I the air. His, I think his team is very interesting to look at 
you know, and in the grand perspective of things, and like even going back to your PRZ, for example, right? yeah, your character field is ridiculous. We have like, a pretty diverse field. Like Summit Wrath of the Mix, character field's ridiculous. Ajax Fidelity and like, like top thirty-two for Dragon Ball was ridiculous. But going back to commentary, yeah, the thing is, commentary now is very. It wasn't like it was year one, right? Year one, everyone was still learning certain things um about the game i think year two um and you as a commentator like i don't know if you can agree um i think year two is more of like we're refining everything if things were changed we're working on that yeah i mean you know? my off the cuff thoughts about about commentary um i i think that for a lot of events I think there needs to be more consideration about caster synergy. I think this is something that has been a problem personally, yeah. Uh, yeah. especially at like regional level events. Not as but may, defend the north. Eh, I didn't. I didn't see much of top eight, so I really can't comment there. But what I How have noticed is that too? at a lot of regional level events, they just yeah. stick two people on the desk. Right. And how did you feel about top thirty two? Uh, I thought it was fine. I I didn't I didn't think it was like egregious or anything like that. I thought it was I thought it was like relatively solid commentary. I'd have to if you want my real thoughts, I'd have to sit down, pull out my notepad, and sit down and rewatch. Because yeah. what I'm watching as for like I'm supporting my boy. I personally I kind of tune out commentary and I'm very focused on what's going on. Game. Whereas when I rewatch. Uh, I might rewatch to a certain angle and be like, okay, what was the commentary doing? What was going on in game? Blah, 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 blah. But right. I feel like too, like the thing was, cause um, I knew both people that were doing top 32 for Dragon Ball Fighter. Yeah. And they were both very nervous. And I was like, yo, well, Ajax in particular, I'm going to put you on blast, my friend. You were like, I need, a, and I will blow him up. This dude put out, took, all the notes he asked me for an extensive list yeah. of players who win their teams if i knew him this dude had a full Let's ipad note, okay a full ipad note full of things because he comes from the smash side of it. right so and he, i told him and that's good he's got his prep work so that's the thing is and like i feel like and luciano's are really just like a good hype man i kind of like a kind of like like very just like just wavy back and forth kind of thing. Like, granted, yeah. there was a few things um, that you know, you know, everybody learns from. Like, I feel like biases, that kind of thing. I feel like you try to leave bias at the door if you can, but it's hard not to when your boy a me assassin does well. You know, because a me assassin's ridiculous. Yeah, he is. But, but the thing is, is I feel like overall, I feel like DTN was DTN. I think commentary was good um, in certain areas. I feel like. This event as a whole, a lot of people learned more about themselves from this weekend. Yeah. Then, whether it be staff, whether it be commentators, whether it be players, because a lot of players made their first top eight at this event. Nova Nova, first top eight. That's big. Axice made top four, beating Chris G. I was going to say, Axice's run was pretty good. Oh, like, someone, someone in the chat real quick is actually oh, a good knows. point. What were your thoughts on the Canadian players? Oh. I was I was personally very happy about the amount of Canadian players we have. I personally love seeing people from different regions and or countries show up to compete. Uh, I, I that, think part, the way yeah. seating was done really kind of diminished the impact the Canadians got to have on the outcome of this tournament because True. they ended up team killing a bunch of each other. I think too it turns to like what happened at final round right where like for like i was expecting this to be at first i downplayed canada yeah because i only heard of kami 99 and timo you luke i was like oh. well luke too because he beat me <laughs> okay but, okay as long as long as he's in there too but my thing was right yeah is that you know i very much didn't hear a lot, a lot of these guys, so it was kind of like a whatever thing. Do I think, and that's not our situation to get into between C and them. That's a completely different can of worms. 
Um, do I think Canada's good? Yeah. I think Canada, I think out of everybody this weekend, Canada had the most to prove. It, I, it, it I kinda, definitely agree. I think, like, because, right, like, we had a final round. Like, we had half of Florida showed up. Yep. Right? And Florida showed up and took everybody out. Yep. And that's the thing, right? Like, combo breaker, too. You saw a lot of people that, you, and even CEO, you're seeing a lot of players that no one even talked about. Ajax Fideli is a good example again. Making ninth at CEO. Yeah. Who? If you didn't play net play, did you know this guy? Right. I, I think one thing I would love to see is there are there are Mexican players, but they typically having talked to some people in the scene for Mexico, it's expensive to travel, given the way that exchange rates work. It's much more expensive right. for them to travel here than for U.S. players to travel to Mexico. So they have to be kind of selective about which events they opt to go to. So right. something like Defend the North is probably not as high on your list. And you end up kind of having to having to pick and choose. Right. Uh, Kami 99 did take it over Lord Knight. That that def- definitely did happen. LK really feels like he has a lot to work on after this weekend. Same with no Kami. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind it's, of it's, interesting. It's, in the way it all gears studio. up to Evo, and it's all it like all this stuff gears up to Evo. Is that kite? That course, is kite. How you doing, kite? Of course, of course, kite shows up at the end of the, end of the episode. So I uh, mean, it's it's kind of interesting. I mean, we, Defend we the North have, we, was what it was. I I think what the the what I almost lost this. Tournaments need to have somebody who, when they do seating, who knows who players are. Facts. Whoever did the seeding for, because a lot of the games, like, say, in, in particular Dragon Ball, I feel like if it wasn't like a World Tour event, like, it wasn't proper. I'll, like, I'll let you know right now. Having done the work I did with the PRZ, I can tell you this was, this would not, not be organized the way it was. No, I agree. In what, I in what world is Lowry supposed to go 0-2? I mean, he did lose. I, mean, I, I okay. know he did lose to your boy. So here's the thing about Lowry, right? Lowry, and there's a lot of players that play in Dragon Ball, not saying it's skill, but like there was a lot of people complaining about, about the tournament before they even showed up. So they were just kind of like checked out. Yeah. So I kind of understand where... Like Lowry said, like I got, I went on to, I never was. Happy. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't seem broken up about it. It was kind of whatever. No, yeah. It but was, it's like it, he's think, he's like a reasonably strong player. I don't know. It's like the brackets were kind of wonky, is kind of how it felt. But right. it was what it was. I think this kind of like can show the rest of the tour, and like the rest of the year that like we will have hiccups. Because a yeah. lot of players had a lot of people, like a lot of tournaments, and a lot of events that we put together. Um, Summit Wrath of the Mix or PRZ, for example, will have its hiccups. Will have its challenges. Yes. But it's how you pick up the ball. I And I think that's really what DTN so far has not done. Is yeah. it's, I, could, I will tell you right now, if an event that I was hosting, if I'm hosting the PRZ tournament, which is obviously much smaller, so I'm not going to try to claim that it would be as hard to run as something like Defend the North. But right. if I made a mistake a tenth as much as what happened here, I can guarantee you I would my apologies would be out in force for the community. Right? Like, like it, All the stuff that happened with Summit Wrath of the Mix, I had out really quick. And there was some things that I had to explain once I had my better thoughts on it. Yeah. But I still, like, you just have to make sure. And I think kind of going back to what I said, like, the thing is, is, like, now, one event that this puts in question now that I just thought about, Battle for the East. That's a brand new event. That, I actually forgot about Battle of the East. That... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm skipping the first year, not because of who's running it, because I want to see what the reaction is first. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I it's mean, like you gotta pick your you gotta pick make your safe bet. It's in Atlantic City, which is kind of nice. I don't know. I might go. I I'm just I thought about it. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I think it kind of goes back to where I mentioned. You have Battle for the East and then ECT. I mean, I'm definitely going to ECT. Like the thing is, is like Kite brings up a good point. Like. If your advertising is garbage, I will say the only time I ever see it advertised is at other majors. I've never seen it just or, in the wild. Or, or there's a date, or it's like ten four or whatever. I'm not gonna lie. I think I've only ever. I think I've I've seen the logo, but I had no idea when it actually was. But I, like I see social media posts because I follow them. Yeah, but that's. I mean, it's not. I think the thing is, is like if you don't have a good advertising and marketing team behind it, it's not going to go well. Well, and especially I think if you're trying to launch another major, because the fact of the matter is, people have to pick and choose what they go to. Like, unless you are a agreed. sponsored player, and I mean a good sponsor. I'm not even talking about like your sponsor is on the back of a milk carton, right? Like, I'm talking about like you got a you got an OD milk sponsor. You can't go to every event. You got to pick and choose. And Battle of the Agreed. East hasn't done anything to differentiate itself other than like, say we're the Battle of the East. And there's a big pop on us for like I think for CC players going to ECT. Heard the location move, but I forgot. Um, so ECT is it in um, Pennsylvania now? ECT is in my state. Oh, it's in CT now. Yep. And I think it kind of goes back to, you know, accessibility. Because a lot of players have already stated, I don't know how I feel about being it, it being like like that. Being like in like a state where it's kind of like, because CT is kind of known for, it, it's okay. Uh, CT is well, like the I, I will state. argue you're probably going to get less attendance purely because for a lot of people, it's, it's got to be out of the way. I heard the hotel is almost sold out. I mean, that's, the that's hotel hurt. sells out at every event. I, I have not no. seen a single event where the hotel hasn't sold out. I think, too, it's just like there's a lot of tours going through it, so I think you see eyes on it. Yeah. So I think it's a smart move, and I'm really proud of the boys that, that are putting it together. Craig, Walter, um, Catterman. Uh, well, I Joe, Sweet Johnny Cage. Um, I've known Walter and Craig. They actually grew, uh, saw me grow up in high school. Yeah. Um, when they're like during Street Fire, uh, during Marvel Three. So I have the actual utmost faith, um, in them, and I trust their decisions. And I would uh, say something different. Um, Kai, I don't know if you should just commute, buddy. Um, we did. There, there might be something. How far away is it? Um, ECT? Kite. Uh, I'm going to come uh, stay with you, man. <laughs> Kite, okay, so Kite, to put it in perspective, Kite lives north from me. Okay. And Stanford is next to New York. How far How far away are you from, uh, from the... Stanford? No, from the venue. Venue is like an hour. So... Wait, Kai, you're going to commute like an hour and a half to the venue? I don't know, Chief, bro. Um, but my thing is, is that we are, I can't say anything yet. Okay. Um, but there is stuff in the works. Ooh. I would just keep a lock on September 7th. There's announcements to make. Is there, I any, have, is there an event I have to go to? There might be an event that J Diesel might oh, be at. Oh my goodness! So I would keep it locked. Um, keep my calendar yeah, no. open. Keep the calendar open. I might be starting a job. And be like, listen, I dog. I gotta be gone these two days, two three days. Okay. Uh, and it's light work. I'll drive to Boston every Friday. I mean, you could just, you know. That's light work. I, I respect the grind, Kite. I, I, I no, very much respect that. Light work. Let's go. But I think we 
this honestly, like from what we've talked about, I feel like there's a lot. Um, so do we should we say our next guest or should we leave up to suspense? Nah, it's gonna be for for this Friday. But so I would so I would just can, can I give him a hint. Give him a hint. He likes to give out presents, and he's a prince of all sands. That's two characters on his team. Figure Solid. it out. Figure it out. Well, guys, that looks like it's going to be just about it. We actually ran long today. Dude, I was that, you know, for a two-man episode, you know, that never happens. But it has been been a solid time, guys. Thank you all so much for joining us. As always, you guys are incredibly awesome. Appreciate every one of you. Anyways... That is going to be... It's Kite on UT... Ooh. Oh, man. Kite out here throwing guesses. I like this. Okay. But anyway, that is going to do it for us. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I have been Jay Diesel. I have been Floki. And this has been Under the Radar. Peace out, guys.